Hey, welcome everybody. This is our September session for doctor integration. And this month we want to go over the authorization methods in TCI Mastery for API management. On our agenda, we're going to have a quick review of how to configure an API within Mastery. And then we'll go over the three, uh, sort of the three most common methods you have for authorization for your APIs. Uh, the first one will be an API key. The second will be using a key and a secret. Uh, to create a signature, and the final, finally, we'll go over how to use OAuth. All right, so we want to have a quick review of the basic setups for APIs within Mastery. It's important to understand how the endpoints are configured and how the security is tied to each individual endpoint, as well as API-wide settings for the endpoint. Cover how packages and plans are created to uh, group these, a, uh, these endpoints into an API, and we'll look at how users will get application, uh, get get uh, packages and plans and keys via the applications. Let's bring up the right screen here. All right. So after you log on to Mastery, you'll see the Mastery Control Center, which is the admin interface for Mastery. And we'll start off looking at our designer for a typical API. And for this session, we broke this down into a couple of APIs. I'm good, we're going to be using um, for workshop one that uses the, the one API will use the key uh, and or the secret, and the other one will use OAuth for an authentication method. So once you create, when you create your API, the first thing you're going to do is create an API. And then um, when you do that, you want to set the security settings for this particular API. And this one, we're going to have OAuth as off because we're going to be using OAuth in our other setting. All right? So if you want to enable OAuth, that's actually a setting that is at the API level. All right? Then for each individual endpoint is where you're going to configure the API, the API security settings for each endpoint. And as a review, the way Mastery works is when you go into your endpoint, you have your main, uh, you know, your main URL. And for your the customers there who are using Mastery, this is going to be whatever the API is for your particular organization that's been created and has an SSL certificate assigned to it. And then afterwards is going to be the URL that is tacked on at the end of that. And then for this, for all these examples, we're just going to use a simple Postman echo. So Postman has an echo service, which just takes whatever your, um, uh, just takes your, um, uh, whatever you send to them and it echoes it back to you. This is just a simple way for us to be able to test APIs. All right. And we notice we're also going to have this set up as HTTPS for both our public and then the actual endpoint. And this HTTPS will uh, encrypt the traffic that gets sent over, right? So we've created, we've created four, uh, we've created four um, endpoints uh, for this particular example, all right? Um, the first one is Postman Echo, and we're gonna use the API key within the parameter. And let's see what that looks like from a configuration point of view. So when we step into this, then we see that now, uh, this little this little uh, uh, breadcrumbs up here tells us where we are. <clears throat> so we're at our API definition, and this is the API called Workshops A, uh, and then this is the actual endpoint that we're configuring. And now once we have we're in here, we have all of these different uh, options, um, uh, sub menu items on the left hand side for configuring things. So we do have our uh, domains in uh, domain and traffic routing, and this is where we. This is where we set what the public uh, the public URL is going to be, and then um, and we see it's going to be API slash parameter uh, post uh, postman echo right, and we're gonna this is the little name convention that came up with this particular uh, this particular workshop right. Now the the main place you want to head over to is the key and method detection. This is going to tell us what methods we're going to allow to be accepted at this particular endpoint. Um, uh, what HTTP methods. When, uh, the endpoint type, this, this endpoint type here just is a way to, it's a shortcut for setting these. And then we're going to, then here's the main piece here uh, for the authentication type. So we're going to select API key. We're going to select, it's going to be in the parameters. And we're going to give the field name is API underscore key. Right? So now we know that for this particular endpoint, um, they're, we're going to be using the API key and in the parameters. All right. So now we look at our second endpoint here, which is the one we configured for the API header. All right, the URL is going to be different. So for the router to this one, we're going to use the API header, Postman Echo, 
and then the key methods detection for this one is going to be set up to be put in the header. And you, we, we are specifying the key name here. So this is going to be the field that that's going to be either in the header or in the um, uh, in the uh, 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 in the parameters, right? And probably because this is a header, I probably should have made it X uh, dash API key. Um, but we, we, we're just using API key for the simple example here. All right. All right. And now for the other API endpoints that are using, um, that aren't using OAuth, we have the key and the secret, All right? So there's a couple, there's a couple other methods we can use for, um, for key and methods for the keys here. So the, the, the main ones here are going to be API, API, key, and secret. This one is an MD5 hash versus an SHA256. Um, and the method is the same, the same method in terms of how we, how we generate those. And there's another one. Uh, so OAuth2 we'll see as an example coming up. And then the, the, the final one is custom. So it is possible to use custom authentication. And the way that you would set that up is you would set this to custom. And you go in here in the call transformations and you check the documentation to see which of the adapters you would use in order to install some type of custom, customization use cust, uh, to, for using custom uh, authentication, and then you would uh, put the correct parameters in that for those particular calls. We're not going to cover that in this session, but it is good to know that if you do have other, uh, there are other methods you can use via our adapters, and that's in the docs.mashery.com. Uh, you can find it in the documentation. All right. All right. So we see that we have this list of endpoints. So we have four of these. The first two are using the API method, and the first one's going to be in the parameters, second one's going to be in the headers. And number three is going to be using the key and secret and in the parameters. And the final one is going to be using the key and the secret in the header. All right. So once you've created these, then we need to head over to our users and need to uh, get the, uh, create the application that's going to store the package and plan key for this. All right. So we can see here, I've had, a, I have a couple of applications on this one, right? So the first one is, um, this is for the API key and secret. And this is just a key here I'm using. Uh, and then um, for the the one with the secret, right? This is actually I have a secret that's also uh, in my package keys is stored in my package key where that secret's actually stored. So we have the key and the secret. And then for the other one for OAuth is um, generates a a uh, uh, key uh, and also key and a client secret too. All right. So now we configure the. Uh, so now let's head over to Postman. All right. So we've seen this the different ways. So the API configuration. Set up the package and plan applications. All right. Now let's head over to the uh, to the API key. So we saw how to configure that. We use the field name, and let's look at the examples of Postman. Okay, so we have Postman, all right? And I created a little collection here for our particular workshop. All right, and this is this one is for the parameters, and we can see in this case the um, API key is part of the parameters here, and this is the uh, this is the um, uh, URL and this little get method is what's required as part of the call to Postman Echo. Then we had just head back over just to see what this looks like from a um, uh, how this is configured. Anytime you have a sorry, head back to our APIs. When you're designing your APIs and you have this endpoint. Everything that comes after here gets automatically put at the path here. Okay. All right. So when we send this, basically it just sends the key in the header. When we send it, it authorizes, sends it back to Postman, Echo, and then sends it all, it sends everything back to us. So we can see what that looks like here. All right. Now for the headers, it's pretty much the same exact thing. And notice that we actually we can actually use the same key. So when we created the plan. So I'm going to show you how we configured the plan for this, the package and the plan. Um, so this is the one here. So we're using uh, one plan is for the secret and one plan is for the API key. All right? So this API key here actually uses both of these. Okay. And this one, this one does here too. So when I generated these keys, I can actually use the same key for both of these. Right. Let's head back over to Postman, see what this looks like. So I can use the same key. I can group these together. And one, one endpoint is configured to use the secret, and one endpoint is configured to use the key. Right? But I can still use those both together 
uh, when I'm creating my um, my uh, endpoint, my, my packaging plan. All right. So now let's see what these look like for the secret when we use the uh, the secret and the key. And when we do that, we, what we want to do is execute this script here. So when we use the key and the secret, we generate a secret and a key, and then we can either we can either set this so we enter the secret or the secret can be generated for us. So I can figure this so the end user can enter the secret, All right? And now what you do is the, the 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 key thing here, the important thing here is to generate the SHA twenty five um, hash on that. So you, you you create a time, and then you generate the hash uh, by concatenating the key and then the secret and the time together. And then those uh, those concatenates together, and that gets passed into uh, as the parameter. Now, the important thing is that this when you use the um, when you configure the endpoint, we saw how to do that by using the key and the secret. And then for the field names, if it's the parameter, the field name is set to sig. And if it's the header, it's s s dot signature. You can't you can't choose these. The signature field is actually uh, decided for you, and this is what you need to do. But the main thing here you want to realize is that in order to generate this uh, uh, this SHA 256, you need to concatenate the key, the secret, and the time, and change that to a string, and then you're good to go. All right. So we see the same exact thing here. If we check this out, how it works in the parameters. All right. So the API key is coming from our uh, the signature. You can see the valid signature is generated for us. The API key is stored in our uh, our Postman collection. And then again, this just brings, this echoes back everything that came back from us. We can see what the key and the sig were here. All right. And the same thing for the, when we put it in the headers, we notice that um, in here for the parameters, it's API key and sig. And for the headers, it's uh, API key and X signature. And then when we send this off, we get the same exact thing. All right. So that's how that's configured when you set up the, uh, when you set up the, um, uh, you use the, the key and the secret, you need to hash those together to get that. And of course, depending upon whatever language you're using, if you're using, uh, you know, if you're using uh, JavaScript, this is how you do it. If you're using Python, you'd use whatever the Python libraries are for that particular, uh, that particular uh, hash generation. All right. Now, the final way is OAuth. So the way the OAuth is configured is a little different. So what we want to do here is head over to our APIs for the OAuth. All right. And in this case, what we do is we set up the security setting. We enable OAuth at the security setting top, and we select the grant types that we want to use. So we actually actually, actually have to enable OAuth at the top level, all right? And then when we create our endpoints, we have to create uh, we have to create a um, a uh, a token endpoint, which gives us the uh, which creates the, uh, the the service that generates our tokens for us, which is this one here. So we create a single endpoint that generates the tokens, and then we go back, then we can generate additional endpoints where we bring data. And we see here in this case that we have this set up here for data. And again, when we go down to any individual endpoint, we have to go to key and method detection and set this up as an OAuth, all right? So we can figure OAuth is there's a couple steps. The first step is at the API level, um, at the API security settings, you turn on OAuth and which, authentic, which grant types you're going to use. Then when you create the endpoints, you need to both, you need to uh, create an endpoint that gives you the token, and then you need to create an endpoint that gives you the data, and get figure that endpoint that gives you the data to use the authentic, that particular authentication type. And we see how this works with, uh, with Postman right here. Um, we use an OAuth, we use uh, OAuth authentication type. So when we go to authorization, we use this, we get a new token, and then when we send it, we use that token to send it, and then we get the data back. All right. So pretty straightforward. It's nice that Postman handles all this for you. So we have, we use the client credentials and then we send it off to our endpoint that we generated, both the ID and the client secret. And this is going to give us the client credentials back. And then we can use that particular, uh, that particular endpoint. We see we have a different, you know, you know, the way Postman manages the tokens for us. Right. So all pretty straightforward. Just want to give you a quick review on that to make sure you understand how to do those configurations. And um, please check back with us next month for our uh, additional sessions for our integration products under TCI. Thanks very much.